A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Today's speaker is the late Leila Seth, who challenged restrictive cultural norms to become the first woman judge on the Delhi High Court and the first woman chief justice of a state high court in India. Leila shares the story of how her work led to a specific area of emancipation for women in India, helping daughters gain equal rights to join family property. When I was 20, I had a semi-arranged marriage and my husband was posted in 1954 to England and I went with him. And I took advantage of being there for three years and studied law. When I returned to India, I was required to train with a senior before I could practice law. He had some idea why I had come, but he wanted to be completely clear. So I told him that I wanted to practice law and I wanted to join his chambers. He was not in favor of women joining the law, so he tried to dissuade me. He said, young woman, instead of joining the legal profession, go and get married. <laughs> so I said to him, sir, I'm already married. <laughs> then go and have a child, he advised. I already have a child. <laughs> it's not fair to the child to be alone, so you should have a second child. <laughs> I said, Mr. Chaudhary, I have two children. <laughs> So taking the back for the third time, he said, come and join my chambers. You're a persistent young woman, and you will do well at the bar. After about 20 years of practice, I was appointed a judge at the Delhi High Court. And in 1991, I was the first woman to be Chief Justice of a state high court. In the old days, when girls and boys didn't have equal inheritance, a young girl was given Sridhan, which is bride's wealth, at the time of her marriage. It was something that was passed from a mother to a daughter and consisted of jewels. It was her personal property. But even that was often taken away. Slowly, the prevalence of dowry started. This meant gifts were given, not only to the bride, but to the bridegroom and to his family. And demands, dowry demands, were negotiated at the time of an arranged marriage. Parents were worried as to how they would meet these demands. It was a great trauma for parents, especially those who had more than one daughter. They spent more than they had, and the extortion sometimes continued even after the wedding. So instead of loving their daughters and wanting to have them, they considered them a curse. And this, they resorted to something like female feticide or female infanticide. In order to prevent this evil of dowry, an act was passed. It was called the Dowry Prohibition Act, 1961. But the giving and taking of dowry continued. And the demand for ostentatious functions and feasts by the bridegroom's family to be paid for by the bride's family continued. This was really terrible. In India, with a very patriarchal society, changing attitudes and changing mindsets is extremely difficult. And it's a slow process, but we need to fast forward it. I was a judge at the Delhi High Court. Three young men came before me and wanted, their father had died, he had, hadn't left a will, and they wanted their property to be sh divided into three parts. I found they had three sisters. So I said to them, I will divide it into six parts, because that's what the law says, and each sibling should get one share. They protested. They said, our sisters are married, our sisters have got dowries, and 
they have given us relinquishment deeds. I was not happy, so I insisted they bring the sisters to court, because I was not sure whether the sisters had been coerced into giving the relinquishment deeds or they didn't know the law. When the women came, I asked them, do you know the law? And they said, yes. So then why are you giving up your share? And this is what they said. We do not want to have any problems with our brothers or spoil our relationships with our brothers because if in the future we need anything of any sort, to whom shall we turn except our brothers, our natal family? How do we do it? How do we take steps to stop this? I think that I can summarize it in four words. First, awareness. Second, assertion. Third, attitude change. And fourth, action. So, sisters, don't be blackmailed by, emotionally blackmailed by your brothers. Don't take dowries, don't hanker after dowries. Demand your inheritance. Brothers, husbands, and fathers, make sure that your daughter gets her legitimate share. And make sure that she has that confidence that is important for her. Do the legal thing. This is the mantra. Inheritance, not dowry. Inheritance, not dowry. Repeat it, act upon it, and let I'll get others to act upon it as well. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Mumbai, India. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Gateway Women. Visit TED.com slash TEDx Shorts to listen to the full talk and learn more about TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.